Hey everyone, and welcome to the Smoking Syndicate. I'm your host, Ben Lee, in the Tatawai Studios in Black Mountain, North Carolina. And this is round table number five. And we're doing the Eroya 11 by 18 PCA exclusive. And tonight, we're joined by the entire Coop Coalition of William Cooper, Bear to Pussy, and Aaron Nielsen. How's it going, gentlemen? Absolutely good. sensational. Doing good. Fan- fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Now, Coop, you have a little bit of information on this cigar, don't you? Yep, yep. Um, so we are smoking uh, tonight uh, for the roundtable uh, the Aroa PCA Exclusive 2021 Edition. Um, so PCA Exclusives. If you are familiar with the Tobacconist Association of America, for years they have had a series of exclusives for uh, those retailers, the TAA. And last year, the PCA decided to launch a similar concept where there would be a series of exclusive cigars offered um, exclusively to those who attend the trade show. And there were a bunch of manufacturers that signed up. And one of them was CLE Cigars. And they actually did two. They did. Uh, they first did an Asylum PCA exclusive, and the one we're talking about tonight, which is under the Aroa brand, the um, the Aroa PCA exclusive. So, what you need to know about this cigar is the first thing is if you have been following what the Aroas have been doing uh, over the past few years. Um, about a year, or two years ago. Uh, Justo Aroa, who runs JRE Tobacco Company, released a uh, Aladino with a Honduran-grown Cameroon wrapper that was coming from his father's farm. And Justo's brother, Christian, who runs CLE, I guess he wanted to get his hands on some of that tobacco, right? So he secured some of that Honduran-grown uh, Cameroon for um, this cigar. So this is using also that Honduran-grown Cameroon. Uh, the, the, the cigar itself uses all Honduran tobacco grown from the Oroa farm. Specifically, um, there's, I, I imagine, a good heaping of Corojo in here. We're smoking this 1118 size tonight, which it's kind of, it, it, what's di- like you know, the 1118s, I, and I wish I had one to show, it's kind of like a, a quasi figurato in that it's kind of thicker in the middle. Um, this is box press, so it's hard to see that thickness in the middle. In fact, I'm having a tough time telling, seeing this period in there. Um, but this is about a six by 54 ish cigar that you'll see. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is this cigar is, um, has a paper sleeve on it. And that's kind of Christian Aroa's, uh, MO. He, he is not a fan of cellophane. So you'll see a lot of his cigars, he's a paper wrapped or tissue wrapped, um, which is the case of this cigar. It has the paper wrap. Um, so that's the skinny on this cigar. They did a couple of other sizes of this cigar. There's a six by 60 and a, f- a five by 50 as well. Yeah, if you look at this cigar, you see like the, I took the paper off here. You kind of yeah. see the taper. Yeah, now, it's, it's, it's subtle. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is like we were talking about this before we came on air that this has been around since the Camacho days. It's been around forever. But this is the yes. first time it's ever been in a box press. I don't know, recall right? another one either. Yeah. And I think if you didn't if you didn't uh if you didn't call it out, I think you'd be hard pressed to notice the, the what we call the soft figure auto size. I mean, you'd have to have somebody almost point it out to you, at least the one I've got. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same here. Same yeah, here. In, the, in, the, in the round, the normal uh, yeah. 11 by 18, it was a much more pronounced, you know, taper down the end of the foot. It, it had a, a pregnant bump. Honestly, it looks like a cigar that had a pregnant bump is what I, I was, you know, kind of my analogy with that. Um, and, the, and actually the 11, 18 is, uh, it was the birth date of Christian's uh, mother on uh, November 18th. So that's where the name came from. There's nothing, the numbers have nothing to do with the size. It's more of the shape. That's such a, that's such a cool story. I really like, you know, I, 
you know, there, there's so many people in this industry that like use numbers and numerology to like tell a story. Dion's very, uh, Giletto of Illusione, he's very, he's very uh, prominent to use numbers. Um, you know, there's it, numerology plays a really cool part in this industry and it's really cool to kind of catch those little gems like that. So the 1118 size is, is named after Christian's mom's birthday, which is cool. It's really cool. Yep. yep. Um, and the other thing to kind of note is this is uh this is not a, an inexpensive cigar is what I'll tell folks. This is a $17 cigar. So it always the more premium brand under CLA. So these cigars just tend to be in that 15 and above price range uh, with that. Yeah. The Robusto is actually not much cheaper than this cigar is either. 1625. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, it's, um, but you know, like I said, they, uh, I think CLE was the only company to do two, um, PCA exclusives, the other one being the Asylum. Uh, both the cigars, interesting, they come in boxes, and I'm going to see if I can pull this up, um, that are that look like ashtrays. So, um, like, basically, the bottom, not look like ashtrays, but can be, I guess, reused as ashtrays, um, which I thought was kind of a cool feature. We've seen that. It's not the first time anyone's done it. They've done it with uh, Placencia as well. Um, but I'm going to see if I have a picture of it here I could show. Um, and, um, of course my photos aren't coming up that, that, okay, here, I got it. So I will share that. So there you can see, that's a picture from the trade show. So the lid is what, um, you could use as the ashtray again. And they did a similar design with the asylum as well. So kind of something again, uh, the, again, the idea of this is. You only if you went to the trade show, that's the only way you could order that cigar. So it's uh, and reorder that cigar from what I understand. So uh, from what else I understand, it's an ongoing limited edition. I don't know if they're going to change it from year to year, but um, typically CLE is not famous for doing a lot of one and done releases. So they tend to do more limited production ones. Beautiful box. Yeah, really it, cool. is. it is. Um, I'm looking at this wrapper here. I don't know how you, there's a lot of modeling on my wrapper. I, I got an excessive amount of modeling. I don't know if it comes up clear, but you can. Yeah. Maybe. Mine's not too bad with that. Yours is definitely has less modeling. Mine, if you, if you kind of, you can maybe see it. It's definitely mine has more. Especially on the backside. Yeah. Mine looks yes. pretty good all the way through. Yeah. I mean, yours it is like really smooth wrapper too, man. It's like this is like yeah, you got a looking you, wrapper. You yeah, you got a better one than I did. Mine is uh, kind of modeled like the like yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to see. You can see that that side view really shows the modeling on mine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't look at as a negative or positive here. I mean, I've had cigars with a lot of modeling. They smoke great, so I don't really put much into that. Um, but you know, you like to see the rappers look consistent. Yeah, true. All right, you want to cut it open and see how it is? Let's do it. All right, I'm going to go first. Um, as we're talking about this, so a couple of things to note that I, I, I uh, as we were building into the review for this, one thing I did notice as I was looking to, you know, take a look at if, if it was reviewed by other other folks in the industry, anybody else that that had uh, reviewed it, I didn't see more than I think one or two reviews, at least from a initial standpoint. I didn't see a whole lot of reviews out there. The um, second thing, so, oh, go ahead. you want me to comment on it? Go ahead. I don't think they did a great job at reaching out to the media with this cigar. Hmm. So uh, it's something I think they're aware of. They have to do a better job with, but they really didn't. And I think that when they don't reach out to the media, it tends to get lost. Yeah, great point. Yep. 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 Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to comment. No, on and that. then the, and the second thing. Um, so a, I'm I'm looking forward to reviewing this for the audience. Um, the second thing I will say is um, I know we've we've all I think smoked it before this is 
there are very distinctive flavors that I can pick out in the, especially in the first third to maybe first half. And so on the cold draw, so leading into kind of what we're getting for me, I get a bubble gum. I get a bubble gum that is uh, just like the old, um, like bazooka or uh, like a hubba bubba, but it doesn't have you know any flavor other than just bubble gum. That is exactly what I get through the cold draw. And I've had several of these and every time that's what it reminded me of. I can actually see what you're saying there. I really do. It kind of has that, um, you're right, like the old timey bubble, almost like the, yes. like when you used to get a pack of baseball cards that had the strip exactly. of gum in there. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I can see that. I, I can could, I could pick that out. Yeah, and it's really woody too for me. Like I, I get a lot of cedar along with that. My draw is absolutely perfect milkshake draw too. Same. Perfect draw. Same. It's it's uh sorry, I already lit mine. I did the cold draw. I was gonna say I, I get um um I I get what you're saying about the bubble gum too. I think it's a little bit more of a pronounced um, you know, like just really can candied apple for me. Like it's still, it's still got that really rich, like sharp sweetness, <clears throat> but I could see like where, you know, where it might be like a more bubble gummy flavor, uh, which is interesting, right? I mean, how many times can you say that? Um, I do get a lot of that dry, 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 dry wood. Um, and there's really not a lot of, uh, a lot of pop. There's really not a lot of spice, a lot of sharp. It's not, it's not too sharp or anything like that. Um, it just doesn't really like catch your, pitch your palate on the dry draw. So. Uh, I'll be interested to see how this develops if it, if any kind of spice comes through as we smoke through the cigar at all. Because usually you get that um, if it's going to be in the smoking experience. I'm not getting the bubble gum. Um, I have gotten it on the, on the 550s. Um, typically, bubble gum's a, a red flag with me when I get that flavor on a dry jar, just so you know. Mm. Um, but I'm not getting but I am getting I am getting the... Um, the cedar and the wood and I'm getting more of a baker's kind of that uh, kind of like that nutmeg flavor more on it right now. And there is a sweetness. So I'm not saying there's no sweetness, but you that bubble comes a very heavy sweetness. I'll get off that. Um, so I may just tune this up. I don't know. It, it could be an, a product of aging. I don't know. These were released at the same time, but, but, um, but I have gotten that flavor on the 550. I'm just not getting it now. And it'd be clear for when people try this and see if they think what I'm talking about. It's not like the sugary, really sweet bubble gum. It's almost as if you the bubble gum that you you've chewed for a little well, bit. Uh, yes, the, yes. The, the sugar's out, and then you've got that. I think we're getting to. There's a soft sweetness to it. Is is? But I have a distinct for me a yeah, distinct it, light bubble gum. And when it's that heavy sweetness is with a red flag. If you're if it's like what you're talking about, it's not a red flag with me. Um, but when it's that heavy sugary sweetness, like something's just not off, something's off with it. But I have gotten that. I'm just like I said, I'm not getting it on this right. It's not hitting me right now with this. I'm gonna fire mine up here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and light, light mine it. up as well, too. All right. So we're all lighting it. Bear's already lit. Bear yeah, sure. Bear. Uh, no, you're he's good. A, bear, bear is lit. Yeah. Bear, yeah. bear is lit. He's very ex- upset that uh, the Yankee Red Sox <laughs> team was postponed. He's got to wait a day to watch baseball. No, he can still watch Phillies baseball. I can watch baseball. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be watching baseball tomorrow. I'm just. Uh, uh, Masters is on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Cubs are on, aren't they? Ugh. I suppose <laughs> I can't. I mean, I'm a Cub fan, but I don't know. I, I should watch it because at least at this point, they're not they're not having a losing season yet. Yeah, this is the fun part, man. It's like everybody's in first place right now. The next year, everybody's yep. in the first place. You know, best part about. Uh... The Yankees, when they lose, is it, it, it fake Alan Rubin loves that team, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. My wife's birthday tomorrow. Um, she said that uh, 
sucks is better on vacation. That was a really, really awkward postcard to get. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all night, people. Thank you. That's my oh, one and done. Wow. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't know how you transition back. <laughs> well, okay, Liz, I want to go back to this bubble gum being a, a like a really bad sign for you, Coop. What do you mean by that? Like, so like you it's said, un- that it's, it's usually an unbalanced flag. sign. Sign the cigar is not balanced. Okay. Like when I get. When I smoke a cigar and I get that raisiny sir- sweetness, like that heavy raisin, that heavy syrup, um, to me, it's automatically it's unbalanced. And it will throw my palate off for the whole smoking experience. Do you, so do you like automatically, do you automatically hate the uh, Colorado girl from LFD? Because like that cigar for me has always been like, Dark chocolate raisin, mm-hmm. ancho, chili pepper. But it's pepper. not that. It's not that. It's not that. No, but I, I agree, and it, that's what you'll get out of that cigar. But when it, when it kind of get it right at the onset, when it's like a blast of it, that's when it kind of is a, a red flag. To me, it's just a sign of, of if, I, if if that raisin is is very prominent, or that that sweetness is very prominent, it's going to throw the whole balance off of the cigar. So let's talk about, oh, go ahead, ben. I, I was going to say, so we're now we're kind of get into this a little bit. Um, what are y'all getting out the cigar so far, even though we're just not getting into it? I'll yap away here. Um, so what's interesting, I've had, this is my fourth or fifth one. This is one's a little bit different, um, but I get the, the prior ones. This goes back to the candy, like sweetness type that I got. I got a cinnamon not like a red hot where it's like, uh, uh, you know, like bite, but it's like more artificial. of like a, like an artificial kind of red hot kind of cinnamon. But I also get with that some woodiness um, and some cedar. So it's a combination. So I picked out when I smoke this. So for those that are listening, I think as you listen to me talk and, and everybody go around what they're getting, to me, this is one of those cigars that you can very easily pick out some distinct flavors. You may not get all of it, but to me, kind of that, that light sweetness with that cinnamon and woodiness is prominent to me. Um, I'm totally in sync with you on everything you just said right now, how to start it off. The cinnamon, the cedar uh, is definitely there uh, for sure. Some of the woodiness as well. So I'm actually kind of pleased how it's starting. Because I think it's my important. 50, my 550 experience wasn't as, as, as enjoyable a start. I can tell you that. So, and I think if, if folks are looking to pick this up, not a, not a cheap cigar um, and, and they see Cameroon wrapper, this to me doesn't have as distinguishable of a Cameroon wrapper than say like the Rocky Patel uh, Cameroon, like that one. I mean, you can, that is a Cameroon to the bone flavor. Yeah. This one has a lighter Cameroon flavor. So if you're looking for that, Maybe not, you know, well, going it's knowing not, that. It's also not genuine African Cameroon, too. So, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, Hondur- it's Honduran grown. But, you know, what's interesting. The JRE Aladino Cameroon, I do get more of a pronounced sweetness of that than this one. I agree. Yeah. You love that cigar, Coop. I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, and that cigar, um, I mean, these cigars are very different, is what I'm going to say. So. They're not like cookie cutters. It's not like Christian's brother took took the Aladino blend here. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a very different cigar. Um, I don't know. I haven't asked the questions if the primings of the wrappers are the same or anything like that, but I, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. Uh, oh, I was just going to share my experience. So, like, yeah. the um, I still get that candied apple uh, sweetness. Um, you know, like, I'm talking like carnival uh, candy apple sweetness in there. Uh, the there's some light mustiness that's kind of joining in, it's got like that a little bit that savory mushroom uh, flavor with a lot of dry wood. There's a little bit of spice on the retro hell. The retro hell is really I don't know if you guys have retroed this at all. It's really short, short, yeah, yeah very finishes. short retro, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, it doesn't kind of linger. Um, like 
like so uh, by comparatively speaking um like the Iroa dark has a very you know if we're talking about in brown right Mm-hmm. has a very very long long retro held finish it's beautiful not yeah. that short finishes can't be beautiful i'm just saying comparatively speaking within the brand um so it's 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 a unique soaking experience how's the draw for you guys i'm getting it's a little couple of notches a little bit tougher than i like it but it's not so it's not so tight to where i really uh, i'm i'm noticing it like or it's uh, it's, uh, it's off my it's off of my, my wheelhouse Especially for box press, it's it's definitely I'm definitely have to work this a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna complain too much about it just yet because like the worst thing it's gonna be is I have an open drawer with this thing. So, but it is a notch or two tighter than I would like. Uh, it's it's, yeah, it's a thick we, milkshake. It's a thick milkshake I'm doing here. Yeah, that we describe as like the ideal right, coop. Like you and I have that. You and yeah. I have that same preference on 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 draws. Yeah. You, we but want then there's a keep- point where it's too much. Then there's a point, and it's it's a little on that excessive side but it's not plugged or anything this cigar either no <laughs> no it's, it's a fine line though it's like this really fine line what makes a perfect draw and what makes an off you know what makes an awful draw yep and this isn't this is not the latter hey ben what are you getting from flavor wise and how's your draw my draw is actually really good um it's it may be a hair a little bit too tight but it's it's not that bad it's it's actually really good I'm getting the same notes pretty much y'all are getting. I'm getting a lot of cedar, um, I, some cinnamon notes, and I'm I'm getting that apple note. But I mean, I've always got an apple note in the beginning of the cigar and all the ones I've smoked. Uh, when Barry describes it kind of like a candied apple, I could totally see that because it does have a pretty like a distinct apple note to me with a hint of sweetness. So that candied apple makes a lot of sense. It's, it's actually a good descriptor for this. Um, and when I retrohale this, it's almost like I get a little bit more of the cinnamon and apple when I do the retrohale, along with some cedar. Um, it's it's off to a pretty good start for me. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's You know what's interesting? I do get that apple sweetness on the Aladino camera, and I know I keep going back to that one. Yeah. It's, it's a distinct flavor getting, there. It's a distinct flavor. It almost, to me, it's almost like a little bit of a caramel apple I'm getting on this one. Now, it's like, it's just, but it's very subtle. It's not a very pronounced sweetness, but it's balancing in nicely with, with the cedar and the baker's spice right now. So I think, you know, I think this is this is opening up pretty decent for me right now compared to, like I said, my 550 experience. I wasn't as high on with this. So Yeah, so I think we've kind of covered the beginning of this pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish the first third. I'll be back to let you know how it is. See you in a second. Everybody, we're back. And we're at the end of the first third. So, Bear, what do you get on the cigar so far? I tell you what, the some of the some of the my early uh, impressions with this cigar, the tighter, the firmer draw. Again, not tight, not plugged, but firmer draw than I normally like has really opened up. The cigar has a really nice flow and draw right now. Uh, the construction, while holding together, is really soft. The 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 ash is very brittle. It's very flowery. Uh, which doesn't bother me like it does bother with some. I, I, I do like to stack stack the dimes, as people say, um, but it doesn't bother me when the ash is very real. I think it's more indicative of, in this case, the tobacco and not necessarily the, the, uh, the technical makeup of the cigar. Um, the flavors are becoming more and more pronounced. The retrohale the, is the finish is still short, but it's gorgeous. It is a short, gorgeous finish on the retro. You get really nice, like savory. Uh, I get that savory mushroom soy sauce, um, and it's balanced with this beautiful candy apple, uh, uh, candied apple sweetness um, that I'm still getting on the mouthfeel as well. Uh, real, uh, the woodiness is kind of the dryness of the woodiness is faded with the openness of the draw. So the draws opened up, that dryness is kind of dissipated and it's more just, just a nice woody flavor that's kind of balancing these other, you know, savory and sweet characteristics. The spice level is really low for me. Um, I'm, I'm getting hints of that cinnamon that you're talking about. It's kind of like dashes, you know, every once in a while, just kind of a little, little, a little sprinkle of cinnamon, uh, but nothing too, nothing too hot. Um, and like I said, the, the pepper spice is, is, is really kind of non-existent, so... Nice, Aaron. How are, how are you doing? So far. 
Yep. So what I, what I, what, when I smoke this, uh, there's a softness to it. And what I mean by that, it, it, there's a, it's not in your face peppery. Um, the smoke is, is, it's not chewy, um, but there's a softness to the cigar. I agree with Bear that the, the ashes is probably not one you want to smoke in your car. I think there'd be ashes everywhere. Um, one of the notes, so I, I, I echo what Bear said in terms of the um, kind of the cedar, the woodiness. Um, I get uh, a little bit of like a cashew, like a cashew nuttiness to uh, what I'm getting. Um, it's, construction's good. My draw, as I, we, we were talking, my draw is phenomenal on this. Um, so really enjoying it uh, so far. Nice. Will, how is Scar trading you so far? So I'm a little behind you guys. We talked, but um, <laughs> so, but definitely like uh, the comment. So how's that pre light? How's that pre light going for you? <laughs> very good, very good, right, right, right. Um, the drawers opened up. That's great news, right? Uh, so I think the drawers like at a level. I, I'm, it's fine now, right? Uh, definitely getting the the flowery ash. It's not a. It's it is a looser ash for sure um on that uh flavor wise like i said i'm the the um the apple sweetness is now resonating i'm still calling it more of a caramel type of apple sweetness and it's some of that softness that aaron referred to um i'll say bear may have put the power suggestion in my head about that mushroomy note because i'm i'm, I'm getting it as well uh the cedar is still in the baker spice is still there for me but keep in mind i'm a little behind you guys right now so um that may as i reach the end of the first third i think that could change so, um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased so far with the 11, 18 thus far. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of the, on board with pretty much all that y'all said. Right. I, I definitely get that. That's kind of a sweet apple flavor. I do get that, that, uh, that, that caramel that you're getting. Will. So I get, I get a little bit of that yeah. as well. Um, I, I get, I was getting like a, that cinnamon in the beginning, but now it's turned into more, it's, it's, it's more of that kind of general term we use of the baker spice where it's 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 more yes, than just cinnamon. there's something more there i do i get the nuttiness that aaron was talking about too um and to me it's kind of more i, I got kind of equate it more to like a like a, a walnut or something something like that but i i get that nuttiness as well it's not it's just a hint of it for me it's I, it's not enough where i could actually pinpoint exactly what i think it really is it just kind of reminds me so far a little bit of like a walnutty note. And on the retro hail, I get the black pepper, a little bit of apple. What I was going to call it, I, I get the same as like Bear was saying, I get, it's like an umami note yeah. in a way. Like it's it's a it's a nice, and I, and I get a hint of saltiness on it as well, just a very little bit yeah. of that. And it's yeah, freaking it's very, awesome. It's very savory. Yeah, it's, it's savory, it's sweet, a little bit of spice. So far, it's this is a really nice start to the cigar. I'm enjoying it so far. Oh, so uh, Ben, I know you're uh, Ben. I know you're a foodie. Have you ever had hen of the woods mushrooms? No, I don't think so. Am I allowed to share my screen? Uh, oh, I could give you that power. <laughs> yeah. You guys, as we're talking, as, as Bear's pulling this up, I get a little bit, and I think it maybe goes with your apple. I could see what you guys are saying about that, but I definitely get some acidity. It's like the coffee, like a, somehow like the, when a coffee is a little bit acidic, I get that coffee acidity to it. Well, look at that. Have you ever have you ever cooked with these, Ben? No. No, I haven't. Mm -mm. I, I've so never picked them in the wild either. Well, yeah, I mean, they, are they're shit them. Are these shit takey mushrooms? These are not. These are called hen of the woods. That's oh, okay. the type of the mushroom that they're called. They're not shiitake. They're not shit shit takey mushrooms. Shiitake. <laughs> they're not shiitake. Okay. If you want, I can show you a picture of shiitake mushrooms. They're, no, they're called hen of the woods. So okay. I mean, they're they're aptly named. I mean, because they look like just like a huge forest of mushroom and stuff like that. But they're also they're also very aptly named because it's it, it's, it's a very woody mushroom. And so, like when I'm smoking the cigar, like I think of Hen of the Woods mushrooms because it's a very woody uh, mushroom that really um, you you don't want to just like eat like Hen of the Woods by itself necessarily. Um, I you know you, I like blending it with other mushrooms just because you know you get more more balance that way. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, just that's what I 
that's what I think of specifically, like when, when I'm smoking the cigar and just like the savory quality of it, the mushroomy quality of it, it's, and the, the woody notes and stuff like that. So, I uh, mean, that, that makes sense because a, you talk about that mushroomy note that, or I call it like the umami note with the, the this, this natural cedar that the cigar has, that makes total sense. So, I mean, I haven't tasted that before, that, that particular mushroom. The way you describe it, that makes perfect sense with the notes we're getting off the cigar. Anyway, we'll go ahead. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Bear. What you saying? Oh, I was, I was gonna, gonna say before day. before we pause, I I wanted to I wanted to get this on the recording. So, um, do the uh, the Iroa label that we have on here has three other words also on the label: salud, amor, and pesetas. Do you got I you guys probably know what some of those words mean in English by themselves, but do you know where do you know where this comes from? Latin. No, it's Spanish coop. Okay. I was gonna, <laughs> but I thought but I was, I was I was saying maybe the Spanish came from Latin. That's what I was just saying. Like you know, just no, like it's, maybe the expression. Uh, well, I, I mean I, I mean I, I don't want to speak for I don't want to speak for Krishner's family, but it's it's a very it's actually a very it's actually from a song, but it's also a very popular saying in Spain. With you know, salud, amor, y pesetas, which pesetas is the, actually a very, it's the very basic monetary unit in Spain. But what it basically means is may you, may you have health, love, and money, and time to spend it. So they got a little bit of trivia. There you go. The more you know. Dice. That was awesome, Mayor. Appreciate so you want to go ahead and pause it now? <laughs> yeah. So uh, there you go. We'll uh, go ahead and finish off the second third. We'll be back to let you know how it is. See you in a second. Now, boss. All right, everybody, we're back. And we're at the end of the second third now. So, Aaron, how's the cigar doing for you? Yeah, so continued excellent construction. I'm a little farther, probably. I'm, I've got about to my down to the, the, the final third. So, as we were talking, uh, there was a point in this cigar probably a little bit past halfway that there was some acidity to it and not a good acidity it was like a a, a coffee with no cream acidity fortunately that didn't last too long now for me it's got in, in this last third kind of where i'm at it's got some sweetness yeah, i'm getting a little earthiness to it and that wood is still prominent um in the cigar the draw continues to be great uh still the flaky ash um but overall, uh, enjoying it. Nice. So, Will, what about you? Um, yeah, that acidic note, which originally I thought maybe it was a citrusy note, but it, it's definitely more of a coffee acidity because I even am getting a little coffee on the tongue. It, 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 it took the cigar down a level. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I had it a little more longer than Aaron had it. I think I'm at the point where it's starting to come out now a bit, but there was a point – of this cigar, I want to say it was like from the uh, the 40% to like the 60% mark where this acidity was just throwing the whole balance of this cigar off. Um, but it seems to be wearing out right now. And I'm getting some more of the, uh, uh, you know, the, some of the apple sweetness is kind of coming back now. Uh, I am getting more of a coffee earthy note now um, in the forefront. It seems like there's Still some cedar. The cedar definitely went down in the second third, as you guys said, because I was a little behind you guys. Um, slight meandering of this burn here. Um, I don't want to say this is a cigar. It's a terrible meandering of the burn, but it's a slight meandering of the burn. Uh, it's not horrendous or anything like that. Uh, the drawers, the drawers, perfect fine. You know, we haven't been talking about the strength level. I mean, this started out at the lower end of medium strength, medium body. I think it's getting a little closer towards the upper end of medium, not quite in that medium to full yet, but, but it has picked up a little in intensity with that. Yeah, that's a good call. And I'll go back to that. We, we didn't mention body strength. I did mention a softness to it. So I think it was a, a straight kind of medium. Yeah. Um, for the primarily through the cigar, this last, we'll call it last third ish. It is, it is a medium plus it's not full body. I mean, I'm not getting, you know, hair standing up or anything like that from a, a a nicotine standpoint, but it is definitely a medium plus as the as yeah. it started going down. Yeah. What I'll say is, as we were talking, this acidity is 
starting to ramp down significantly. It, 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 it there was a point where I was worried I was going to have yep. to slow down. So, I had the same it, thing. I had the same it, thing. It's it kind of came back. It's come back. Yeah. It dissipated um, yeah. as I got past that yeah. kind of sixty percent mark you were talking about. Yeah. Bear, what are you getting on the cigar? I uh, well, I wanted to try and hold this ash as much as possible because I wanted to show that little flowering there at the top, and then I'm, it's gonna the ash is gonna fall off. There it is. Uh, as soon as I as soon as I kind of just slightly tap it, but um, no, this this cigar for me in terms of like let's say kick off the point where we just picked up there with the strength it was really light uh light bodied um you know medium flavor to open it up uh, the second third really brought brought in the medium the the strength kind of toned up to medium it stayed there for me it'll probably stay there for me for the rest of the cigar at this point the finish is still uh on the retro is still short but still beautiful for me. I have, I, I'm well, luckily I didn't get any of that acidity that they got, you know, that everyone's talking about. Um, the, the second third um, and, you know, and, and into the last third of the cigar are definitely improved from that first third for me. The flavors are more pronounced. There's more balance that, that the flavors have remained consistency. This isn't like, this isn't a roller coaster of flavors for me. Um, you know, I, I'm still getting that candied apple sweetness. I'm still getting the dashes of cinnamon, the woodiness, the savory notes, the mushroom quality, um, is still there. Um, it's not as mushroomy in this lat going into this last third as it was in that really rich second third, uh, sorry, Aaron, no crescendo of mushroom, <laughs> um, to go into this, the end of the cigar, but, um, it's 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 remained consistent flavors so so this brings about an interesting conversational point when we talk about cigars having consistent flavors right and i think that this kind of gets a bad rap and i've heard skip martin of roma craft to back talk about this too because they say consistency can be boring monotone i don't think these flavors are monotone they're not muted flavors but they are consistent flavors um all the way through the cigar for me um, and while the body, the strength was very light to open up, the flavors weren't as pronounced. There's still balance there. The flavors became more, more pronounced in the second, third, as the cigar starting to wrap up, they're still there. And so I don't get, it's not monotone. It's not muted. It's not deaf in flavors. Um, so, but interesting, like, what do y'all think about that concept and that stigma of, consistency and flavors is that make a boring cigar or does it just depend uh, uh, you, know, you know what's interesting i'm not getting that like i don't think it makes for a, bore, a bad cigar right it will it will kind of maybe take it down a complexity point for me but i got some there's some transitions going on in this cigar yeah so it's not monotone with me by any means there's definitely i think it's keeping this some core flavor but this is kind of transitioned a couple of times uh here there's more complexity than I, I expected from this cigar, especially after smoking the 50. So what I'll, I'll say, Baron, it's a great question. What I'll say is I don't think what we'll call monochromatic uh, makes a cigar boring. I, what I like, so if you have a cigar that you really like, mono, monochromatic, no transitions, kind of straight laced is okay by me because I'm enjoying it, right? What I don't, what I get disappointed in is if it starts out that first third is excellent and then all of a sudden it just dovetails from there, then we all know what that, that kind of goes into. So I think the long winded response is it depends. It depends what the cigar offers. Yeah. So my point is, I think if, you, if you're enjoying the cigar and it's, it's kind of consistent from a flavor profile, and you like it? I think it's a good thing. Ben, what do you what do you think? Yeah, actually, I got an interesting story about this topic. Um, I believe it was maybe the second cigar safari I went on, if I remember right. And Coop, you, might, I, I think you were there. I'm not real sure. I can't remember quite who was all there, but we were on the tour bus, right? And we were um, going somewhere. And I can't remember exactly where we we're going. But Jonathan Drew it, it brought out this little baggie of different samples that were made up, 
right? And he handed a few of us different these the different these sample cigars, and we were all smoking them. And he was going around like, well, you know, what do you think? What do you think? And all this, and um, I remember a couple of people were like, uh, it's you know, I don't know, it's not that great. It's not very complex. It's just kind of the same all the way through. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's a very good, you know, cigar. Blah blah. blah. I, I wouldn't say nothing. I would just sit there enjoying the cigar because I liked it. And he said, "Well, Ben, you haven't said nothing. What do you think about it?" I said, "I really like it." Yeah, it's yeah. not a. It's I not remember a, this. I remember this now. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, "It's not a complicated cigar at all. It has like basic. It had like four notes. I think it was all." And it never really changed, right? I mean, you might have had a one note that was a little bit more that kind of went down, then another note took its place. And it was you know, that was about all. There was no no change of flavors whatsoever from the beginning to the very end, right? All I can remember was it had a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. It's all and I don't know if that ever came out or whatever happened to this. But I said, I, I don't care that it's not changing. I really enjoy these flavors. So I don't care if they go away or they get replaced with something else. It's overly complex. I don't because I'm enjoying it how it is now. So to me, it's not a big deal that it's not super complex and changing constantly. I'm I kind of like it the way it is. So I'm really enjoying the cigar. You know, it's like ah, oh, it's you know, I'm glad to hear it. that's that's interesting take on that cigar. So to me, it's I don't I don't really care if the cigar is overly complex and it's flopping around with the notes and all that shit. I, I mean, if it's, if I like it, how it is, and it kind of stays that way, you know, I, I'm good with that. That doesn't bother no. me at all. I don't have, it doesn't have to be super complex for me to enjoy it. You know, it's, it's when it's monotone and muted is kind of, it bothers me. Yeah. So you know what you were quick on that note though, for this discussion, it's interesting to see, you know, you see a lot of people review cigars, and they'll give extra points for transitions, right? So I, well, I, and so, I do that. And I do that, just so you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I well, think. It won't, it won't ding you, is what I'm saying. So you could get like a 90 and have a monotone cigar. Right. So I, I think um, I think people put a lot of stock into the idea of transitions. And I think it can be a good thing, but it can be a negative thing too. So I just think, again, it, it just depends. It won't, yeah, because it shouldn't take points away. Like you, like, like I said, I look at when you get a 90, that's a cigar, you know, a very good cigar. It's when you're going to buy multiples of that cigar, maybe a box purchase in some cases. Um, and it's done the things it needs to do. And then when you get into 90 and above, that's when the bonus points come in. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, and we, we, we've talked a lot about scoreflation, you know, like 97s and you read the review and it sounds like someone just was okay with that cigar, you know? So, but yeah, so, um, there's, like I said, I, I'm kind of on Ben's side with this. It, it doesn't, if I, I'll, I'll still, I can still very much enjoy a cigar that's, that's not doing a lot of transitions. Bear, I kind of, I kind of know what, where you're going with this. Go ahead and explain what you mean by what you say kind of muted and monotone. Oh, what I mean by like monotone. So like, yeah. So like what I was saying, like what I don't like is like monotone and muted flavors, meaning like it's, it's the same flavor throughout the cigar and it's like this, there's no depth. Yes. The exactly cigar right. lacks depth. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. kind of like I'm smoking to, to smoke a cigar and that's it. So so Aaron, and not to, not to, not to call you out or anything, but like we, I was smoking a cigar the other day that I really enjoy. And that, I, I mean, if we want to describe the way that you were describing your experience with that cigar, that's what it was. And, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, we were talking about a, a cigar specifically. Uh, I mean, do you want me to call it out, Aaron? Or sure. I, I mean, okay. sure. So the scene, the scene compromiso. Yeah. Dunbar yeah, yeah. Trust. Yep. Yep. So, for you, that experience of that cigar is 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 what I don't like. And so I love the same compromise. I like it because it, it hits my palate the, the way that I just like it. So, but when you describe your experience with it, you describe that that kind of experience where it's just you just there isn't there isn't any depth for you, and that's mm-hmm. that's where it's kind of boring. So I'll give you an example of a very of a cigar. Coop, you'll love this because this is this is going back in the archives a little bit, but a cigar that was very much the same flavor note 
like notes, like two or three, very simple cigar, but God damn, was it good. EP Carrillo Cardinal, man, the Cardinal series. The original, very much. Yeah. Just a straightforward, straight lays, deep flavored cigar. The Maduro specifically was fucking outstanding. And, um, but there, I mean, there just wasn't this like roller coaster of like transitions and like, you know, the flavors didn't go all over the map. It was just like, this is damn good cigar. Another cigar that is like this, that has incredible depth. And for the life of me, I can't come up with any better like descriptors other than the fact that it's just a damn good cigar. Saga blend number seven. Yeah. It's just a freaking amazing cigar. And there's, there's not much panache to it. There's not much, you know, there's no fireworks. It's just, fucking good and 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 it's just kind of the same flavor notes throughout the cigar consistent and it there's but there's a lot of depth to it and that's i i, I think that's fine I, I i think this cigar kind of falls a little bit sort of in that category a little bit but man that second third for me was just so rich see um, that's i thought my yeah see i didn't get that i thought it was it was the opposite i was acidic um, really so this is an example of a, a transition that did that worked against the cigar. Like a transition can sometimes work against it because then the flavors may not be as good. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So that's that's why you know, I you know, like I said, and and the other thing is the other thing is um, you know, and that that's happened a lot. I mean, just think you could get the transitions and the flavor if the flavors aren't good. That's why I don't like put a huge complexity uh, number into into a score, but I'll put some. It, it, there's some into it, and in that case, it may still be complex, but it's going to get dinged on flavor during that part. Because I'll score each third of the cigar. Yeah, that's kind of so. What I'm what I'm getting out of this cigar now is I I get I get that I still get that little bit of the apple note, but to me, it's a lot more muted than it was before. I, I'm getting a little bit, for me, I'm getting a little bit more of that kind of that caramelly note and that baker spice. I get still get some of that. The umami really comes through what I read for Hell of a yeah. Cigar. I still get that. And for me, it's it's almost got a little bit more of a saltiness about it than it did in the in the first third. Now, I, I yeah, did get... That's I got, especially the retro, yep. Yes, and I, yeah, and I, I, I did get that that acidic flavor and for about an inch right in the middle of the cigar. But to right. me, it for me it wasn't really overpowering or nothing, because to me I was getting enough of that sweetness to kind of kind of balance that out a little bit. But now it's at the end of, of the second third, it, it went away. It's it's not there at all anymore. So I'm still getting pretty much all the same flavors, just kind of you know they're different. Like w- which ones you know come to the forefront with the back and stuff like that which I, I kind of personally enjoy that. So off to a pretty good start, I, you know, to me, it's for what I, when we're talking about the, the body of it. When we, the first heard to me, it was kind of like a medium light for me. And then now it's more of it to the medium, like a true medium. Yep. Kind of yeah, going definitely towards me. Slight... Yep. That's exactly what I thought with this. Yeah. So, uh, uh, cigar is still going good. I, I have a wavy burn. It's, you know, it's always, it's been wavy the whole time, but uh, not too bad. Not, nothing really major. Yeah. Um, I think we're, you know, pretty, pretty good second, third, besides the acidic note was kind of a little bit weird, but uh, I know Barry, you didn't get it at all, which is, that's lucky for you. Um, yeah. For me, it wasn't nowhere yeah. near as bad as what Will got. It's to me, it was like, it was there, but like I said, the sweetness kind of, kind of balance that out a little bit and then it went away wasn't there for very long which is good so uh anyway we'll go ahead and finish this cigar off and we'll let you know how, how it finished out see you in a second hey everybody we're back and we're at the end of the end of the cigar now so will how did this cigar finish off for you it finished okay right um it i was getting a more of a coffee note in that last third I still had some of the residual uh, acidity, but it wasn't as bad as in the second third. Um, there was still some notes of, you know, I still could pick up some of the apple sweetness. I still could pick up a little of the baker's spice. 
definitely some of the cedar notes were there. Um, the strengths kind of leveled off. It never went to medium to full uh, as far as that went. Um, so, I mean, it finished okay. It wasn't like – I still think the first third was the best of the three of these uh, components there. Uh, as far as that went, a um, couple of other notes is, like I said, I, I was I was a little pleased that there was some transitions that happened, but they just didn't transition the way I wanted it to transition at times. Um, and, and there was a point where I, I, I got about this far down and it was getting harsh and it was time to put the cigar down at that point. So I did. Um, so, I mean, I was I was hoping it would kind of rebound a little more than it did. Um but uh, it didn't fin. It wasn't like that. That second third was. I was worried I was gonna have to just abort. So. So, bear. How did it end for you? Um, I I like the way that the cigar finished. Um, I'm really I'm really sad to hear that Coop had such a poor poor finish in second third. Considering the second third was the highlight for me. Um, really, really start, uh, it was the star of the show, the second, third, the finish, uh, continue those flavors. They, uh, they weren't as deep and rich as the second, third. Um, so again, uh, yeah. my apologies to Aaron, no crescendo. Um, but, um, I really thought that the, the mushroomy, uh, savoriness was still there. The salty component that you were getting in the second, third, Ben actually came out more pronounced for me in the, in the final third, uh, the fin uh, the retro hail became deeper, still short, still very nuanced. There was a lot more spice component there. Finally, finally in that last third, did you get some of that little pepper, a little bit of char that kind of rounded it out. And that's when I knew it was time to put the cigar down. I didn't let it, I didn't literally affect me, but I mean, I, I mean, I barely had anything left when it went down. Um, I mean, I was down to my fingertips getting burned a little bit. Um, and, um, yeah, overall solid finish to the cigar but the second third was the was the bell of the ball for me on this one sounds good aaron how did it finish for you yeah so i think a combo of, of both the guys so um i agree with for me the first third was was the highlight of the cigar um but i'll say the through the second third and the final third kind of remain consistent um i did get a little of that baker spice um still had a little bit of that what i called the cashew kind of some nuttiness to it uh, my draw remained good. Um, I did put it out too, to where it was was down to the the nub here. Um, I it didn't get which I didn't get that like bitterness towards the end, which was pleasant to me because a lot of times you get down to that that last you know couple inches, you get kind of that that muddled bitterness. Uh, I didn't get that. Um, still short finish, as as Bear mentioned. Uh, kind of finished with some earthy, a little bit of coffee. Uh, and, and still that kind of woody component. So overall, I enjoyed this cigar. Yeah, for me, on the on the final third of the cigar, I, the apple note was kind of gone. I didn't get none of that. I, it's mostly cedar, baking spices, a little bit of that nuttiness. The saltiness was still there. I did get that charriness, a, a hint of that charriness that kind of Bear was talking about, too. Um, and the retro hail, I still got a little bit of that kind of the umami flavor and black pepper, but I was actually picking the black pepper up on the final third as well on the palate. Well, I really wasn't getting that much the rest of the cigar. You know, overall, I thought it was a pretty good cigar. For To me, I, I think the first third to me was probably the best part too, but the, 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 second, the second third and the final third to me was kind of the same, a little bit of the same. Um, to, for me, like I said, it, to, it started off kind of that medium light with the medium in the middle, and it almost was starting to approach like a medium plus, and it, but it just kind of leveled off at that point. It, to me, it, yep. it didn't ever reach full body or nothing. Um, uh, on the finish, which we've talked about this before, I like a long finish on a cigar. Coop likes a short finish. Um, Bear and Aaron, I don't know I where did. you're at on that. Um, to, long to finish me, all day yeah 100 percent. Aaron, do you like a long or short finish or somewhere in between on a cigar um i would say probably a little bit in between um but I, I if i were to lean i'd go the longer finish yeah so for me i i felt like i got it was a short finish at the beginning but as it got to the final third of the cigar it was more of a medium finish like i got a, I've, i was tasting a little bit more 
you know, after I kind of blew the smoke out. So it was, to me, it went from like a short finish to a medium finish, which to me is a, is a plus. I, I wanted, I want a long finish always, but, um, overall I thought the cigar was, was really good. So I guess it's time to do scores now. So who wants to lead off with their score? Aaron, why don't you go? What's your, what's your score? <laughs> All right, so I, I wavered a little bit, not, not, but I'm going to give it a solid 92. Um, oh wow! I, I think, wow. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think um, the first really half, we we'll call it really half a cigar. When I can, I really enjoyed some of the sweetness, the cinnamon I talked about. Um, overall, the burn was outstanding. My draw, I, I think I probably had of the four of us, I had the best draw. So that that to me um was really enjoyable so i'm going to give it a 92. nice and as far as the the, the, and the far as the recommendation i'd say buy a fiver right because of the price point um i look if you had a lot of this expendable income um maybe more but i i think a fiver would be at the price point and my score bear what would you score it so you heard it, guys. That means Aaron's going to buy a box and he's going to give us nope. some. So that's good. No. Nope. Um, no, I, um, I, I really got to say, man, the first, the first third of this cigar killed this, killed the, killed the score for me a lot further. I'd probably, I don't know if I'd be in the upper echelon where Aaron is. I thought I was going to be the high score today, uh, just based on what I was hearing. Uh, uh, Aaron, that score kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, not in a bad way. Just uh, I, I didn't think you're going to score it that high. Um, um, for me, the first third really kind of just killed the killed the score and brought it down for me. I thought that second third was fucking amazing. Um, and then the, the finish of the cigar was really solid, too. Um, but with that first third, just not doing much for me, light body, light strength, the tougher draw, the flavors just not being as as deep and pronounced. It really kind of brought it down for me. My, my score is an 89. Wow. That, that's still solid. Uh, Will. What would you score the cigar? That's a good score for me. That's a good score for me. Yeah. <laughs> 89 is a good score. 89 means I'm coming back to it. So, oh, recommendation. So, uh, oh, yeah. Said this. So, same thing. I, I, um, because of the price point, I think you need to be kind of uh, cognizant of that. Um, and, uh, you know, if you like, you know, if you like a solid two thirds of a cigar and you can, uh, stick out the first third in my mind. I think it's going to be an enjoyable experience for you guys. And, and so I, I'd recommend buying, you know, buying three, uh, buying multiples and, uh, at the price point that you're at, uh, if you're comfortable with, uh, with buying it, um, you know, that gets you, that gets you in just a little bit under 50. Um, um, and so, so I think three, three cigars would be a pretty good purchase for this considering the price point and everything. So, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be smoking this again. I will because 89 is a good score for me. Yeah, that's solid. Very solid. Will, what what would you give it? Well, I think I'm being generous here with my score. Uh 87. Oh. Uh, and I'm not recommending. I thought you're gonna I thought I thought you're gonna be lower, man. I thought you're gonna be it, lower. It, it, the first third gave this cigar and it had it got some of those bonus points for the transitions that I talked about, right? Um, but I don't recommend this cigar. This is a seventeen dollar cigar. And um, in my opinion, it's a PCA exclusive. And honestly, you could find better Cameroon. You could find a, a better, um, you know, a better Cameroon. You could find a better $17 cigar. Um, not awful. It wasn't all, like, it wasn't awful. That second third was awful for me, right? But like I said, it did Shit, rebound awful. a little. In the, like, I'm telling you, it, it saved it. It saved it from like an 80. It was it was going 85, 86. But I, I guess, thought you're going to be 85, man. I really did. It, no, this wasn't a dog. I mean, that's when you're getting into that's when you're really getting into dog rocket. And this wasn't a dog rocket. Right. Um, I think there's some, you know, I, I had its moments. This cigar is what I'm going to say. It, it was a well constructed cigar. Right. So it didn't. You know, it didn't fall apart or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, it came out a little higher than I thought. But 87, uh, I think, was generous. But I'm not recommending this cigar by any means. It was just nothing that would make me come back to this cigar. Nor would I feel comfortable saying to someone, you got to go buy this cigar. Um, it's it's it, at 17 bucks. I think they, I, I just can't in my mind do that. 
But, you know, no one's wrong here, and certainly everyone has different opinions on that. So, um, 87. So, I wrote Dark, Yamas John, everything else, except for this one. (laughs) For you, right? You'd you'd recommend everything else over it. I mean, yeah, I'd go, I I, honestly, yeah, I would recommend the others. Um, You know, like I said, I I would go for an Aladino Cameroon, which is a little less expensive. Um, I'd go to in a row at the first 20 years, you know, any of those are are comparable prices and you're going to get a much better experience from this. Yeah. But Uh, but Coop, let me ask you this. Okay. So I obviously gave it the highest of the, of the three, but so that goes back to where I didn't factor in price other than what I said to buy. I didn't factor in price either with that. I didn't factor in price with this. You're saying you'd rather go buy because at a different price point, you would buy the other ones. So I, I guess where I'm going is, Oh, those are all the same price you. point. I, I, well, I agree with you guys in a sense of I think it's overpriced, but if I'm gonna just gonna give the a cigar well, it's on merit, on, yeah, that and that's what I'm saying. I believe on merit, eighty-seven is eighty-seven, but you know there may be some eighty-seven cigars that are five-dollar cigars that I would say, you know what, take a chance and try it at least. Um, but this one I just can't. I, I don't. I can't see someone even saying. You know, I can go by your recommendation saying, hey, look, everyone else really liked this cigar, but I don't score. I don't give a, a recommendation, a buy recommendation. I go on strictly what I what I think. Okay. Yeah, but, I, you know, it, it, it's uh, there's no wrong here. Uh, certain cigars just sometimes hit people different than other cigars. It, hap- it happens. Uh, it, it's, that's the beauty of, like, what we're doing here. Uh, but actually, this is not a dog rocket, but I expect it better from CLE. I, they, they're capable of doing better than this. Christian is definitely capable of releasing superior cigars than, than this one was. Yeah, so I, I'm somewhere in between, right? So I, I, I like the flavors I got out of this. I, I like the apple note. I like that, that the nuttiness, the cedar, the baker spice, the, the hint of caramel, the little bit of that saltiness in, that was in there. Um and I note that I actually forgot to mention that I was getting on the final third was like a coffee bean note. Yeah, I got that. Um, co- so I was getting that coffee bean. Note. That yeah, saved yeah. it. That saved some of this, by the way. Yeah, and I, I love that. It's one of my favorite notes to get. Right. Yeah. So to me, all of that combined, um, I'm going to score this a. I'm kind of wavering in between two scores. I, I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a ninety. That's what I give it. Wow. And I really like this cigar, but to me. In my mind, the whole time I'm smoking this, the cigar I'm comparing it to is one that Will's brought up several times, the GRD vintage, the GRE vintage Cameroon, especially in the, the Elegante de Lancero, which I thought was phenomenal. Yeah. That's phenomenal cigar. So if I, if I, if I, you, you've handed me this cigar and then that one and say, hey, pick one, I'm going to go with the vintage Cameroon, right? To me, I just, right, I, every day, every, the flavors on that cigar to me are 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 better. I enjoy that cigar a lot more actually, and that's why which is why I gave it a you know a higher rating uh, when I did review that. So and then seventeen dollars, man, that's a lot, especially when you compare it to that vintage Cameroon, right? So to me, is I, I I give it a ninety. I say you know go buy a couple, you know give it give it a shot and see what you think. Because obviously we're all getting all kinds of different things. We all we all thought kind of differently with uh, the cigar, um, but I think it was a solid solid cigar for me. Now, well, you've had the robusto, so how did, how does it compare to the robusto in this line? Better, better. So, okay, this better than the robusto. This the well, robusto was worse. <laughs> the Robusto, I didn't officially score it, so I don't want to say, but I'm just telling you that the Robusto was not as good as this cigar. This had moments of it. Um, so I, I had a lot of harshness on that Robusto, especially in the second half. Yeah. So, now, I will thing. say to me that when we're talking about aging before for other stuff, this is one I would like to age because I think it has I, potential I, to get better as it gets older. So that's just I something. agree. I think it's worthly. Uh, and, and I'll, I agree. I also agree that um, the uh, I, I give the 60 a try to see how it would smoke. 
Yeah, I probably would end up doing that too. Honestly. I'm curious because I'm, I'm, I'm curious. So you know that I hate that freaking size. I hate six by sixties. But you've turned me on to some great ones. So now I'm willing. I'm at least willing to try them. You know. So I, this one I kind of wanted to see what it's like because you're you, you know. So this cigar is better than a robusto. So maybe the sixties is a sweet spot in this one. Maybe I don't know, but I'm willing to give that a shot. It it might. I'm willing to give it a shot too. Um, you know, it's just you know, you never know. Again, and one thing about that sixty is it's going to smoke smaller than the sixty because it's pressed, so it's not going to be quite as aggressively big. Yeah, and that's that's actually something. When you know, when a six by sixty is a box press, to me, it's it's a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I I will give that a shot. So I know that this sold out in my local cigar shop, B and B Tobacconist in in Asheville. This size is sold out. Um, there's still several six by sixties, but the guys at the shop here don't really care for six by sixties as much as some other shops that I that I frequent. So they're there. I'm gonna give that one a shot probably this Friday. Um, because I'm kind of curious about it now after what you said about the Robusto and how I know this one is. And re- really the, the telltale of it is how how you thought this what this level of AT was versus the Robusto. To kind of keep yeah. it keep it the same. But um I'm kind of yeah. curious about this. Now I had the Robusto, it probably had less age on it too. So I'll be honest about that one. Because that was one I kind of smoked right off the shelf on that one when it came out. So this one, I mean, it was on my retailer shelf for a couple of months. So, so you know, maybe I go back and give the Robusto another shot, too, with, with some age on it and see how it does. I've had cigars change with age, as we, we talked about tonight. Very true. Well, um, I think we've covered this pretty well. So, uh, on that note, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.